Hi, I'm Semen Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Revisiting Stability Criterion Misconception. I'm showing here a border plot of a closed loop system. Here's the magnitude, the solid line, and the broken line is the phase. And we have here a case in which the amplitude starts at low frequency and high values, then it goes down. And then we have the phase starting at zero degrees, and then it goes down, lagging to below minus 200. And the question is, is this system stable or not? Many will say that this is unstable system. Well, as it turns out, this system is stable. So the objective of this presentation is first of all, to talk about the basics of negative feedback, just to have a background here, and then to discuss why intuition is wrong in this case, that is saying that the previous system that I've shown is unstable, while it is in fact stable. And then I'm going to discuss when is the feedback system unstable, talk about Nyquist stability criterion, and then the translation of this stability current criterion to the border plane, and then we'll wrap up with some example with empty spice of stable and unstable systems. So here is a generic representation of a negative feedback system. I have here two blocks, and then there is a feedback block. We have a summing point here. The signal in is S sub in, signal out S sub out, and this is the error signal, and this is the feedback, so that the gain from the error to the feedback is the loop gain, okay? We call this the loop gain. This is the total gain here is the loop gain. Now we know that the transfer function between the input and output can be expressed in this equation. Now I'm showing here that this equation comes out from the fact that first of all, we have a loop gain which has inherently a phase reversal that is a negative feedback this is the reason for this minus. So this system is already assumed to be negative feedback. And then we have a minus when deriving this equation. So we end up with this equation in which mg is actually the absolute value of the loop gain. Okay, so this is very well known. Now in the case that I'm showing here, if I look at the point that is marked here, we have a high gain here. We have a phase reversal of 180 degree. We start actually with a phase of zero, but this is not zero, it's actually 180 because there is a inherent phase reversal and the negative feedback. So the total phase shift here is zero, or 360 you might say. So w at this point, the phase is the same phase at, as the input. So we start with a signal here, and we end up with a signal with the same phase. So that is, in this case, we have a signal starting here, then it's ending here at S of F. Originally, there was a phase reversal because of the negative feedback. Now we have an additional 180 degree. So we have a plus sign here, so the same phase as S, e, S sub E. So the argument goes like that. If we have here a signal, the same phase and larger than we have started off, then it will amplify it again and then go back, amplify it again, and eventually the system will sort of explode and it'll be unstable. Well, you can intuitively see that this is incorrect because if this is the transfer function, as we have said, and now we have a plus here because we have an extra phase shift of 180 degree. Then this is now the transfer function. So suppose the gain is 100. And then we have in here minus 99. So the gain will be a sub zero divided by minus 99. So what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong about that. Okay, it's a, it's a certain transfer function. There is a phase reversal, by the way. And there's no reason to think that this will be a unstable system. Now, this is, of course, an intuitive explanation. There is a mathematical foundation 
to what we are talking about and I'm going to discuss this in the following. So let's start with the very basic. If we have a feedback system, we can express the transfer function by this expression in the Laplace uh, domain. We have a numerator, we have a denominator, I'm showing the here it as a polynomials, and we know that we can break these polynomials into the roots, so we have zeros in poles, some might be real, some might be imaginary, and I'm showing now here the distribution of the zeros on the pole in, say, some general case, and I'm showing it in the complex plane. That is, this is the imaginary axis and this is the real axis. And here, the axes are the poles and the circles are the zero. So we have some poles in the left side of the complex plane. We have some poles on the right side. And then we have some poles on the axis j omega. And then we have the same thing with the zeros. Now, poles on the imaginary axis actually means that this is an oscillator and I'm not going about to talk about this, it's a very special case. I'm going to, to talk about stability. So I'm concentrating with these poles, the left side and the right side. And the point that I'm now stressing is the following. If we have poles on the right side of the complex plane, then when you convert back, we go back from the Laplace domain back to the time domain, you will get a term or terms that will look like that. That is, we are talking about AC signal, so it's a sinusoidal, and then it's going to have some e to the power al alpha t when alpha is positive. So if you have poles on the right side of the complex plane, you end up in the time domain with something which is sort of uh, diverging or exploding, you might say, and therefore this is an indication of an instability. Okay, so this is the culprit, this is the problem that we have. We also have a problem with the right side, uh, zero in the right side of the complex plane, I'll talk about it a little bit later. But the key to instability, to understanding instability, are the poles on the right side of the complex plane. And the question is, how can we recognize in a system if we do have such poles? Now obviously, if I can write the transfer function, then I can break it into the roots, and then I can find out whether I have poles on the right side. But this is very tedious and not always practical, because I need a model, a small signal model of the system, I have to derive this equation, this is not practical. So instead of this, we have a very powerful tool, which is the Nyquist stability criterion. Now the Nyquist stability criterion is talking about actually roots of a denominator. This is what this uh, criterion is talking about, and this is what we are interested. We, we want to know as to whether in this denominator there are roots, which are poles, on the right side of the complex plane. So the system will be unstable if this denominator has poles in the right half side of the complex plane. This is clear, I talked about it like a minute ago. Now the Nyquist criterion is actually a test to see if we do have poles on the right side of the complex plane. Now the test is based on the Cauchy argument principle. I'm not going into it. It's fairly lengthy explanation, not necessary for the practical use of the Nyquist stability. I, I'll just say that it's a matter of mapping uh, from one presentation to another, one coordinate to another coordinate. And uh, this Cauchy argument principle or law, you might say, helps us to actually recognize these poles that I'm interested in. Now Nyquist criterion is normally translated into the border plane, which is easier to work with. There is the Nyquist plan, there is the 
bother playing. I'll talk about this in a minute. So here is the Nyquist presentation of a system. And what I'm showing now is actually the loop gate. This is the loop gate. And the coordinates here are the imaginary part of the loop gate. And this is J in, in terms of J omega, F, and the read part of the loop gate. Okay, these are the coordinates. So this length here is the absolute value of the loop gate. And here this is the phase of the loop gate referred to zero. Okay, so this is a presentation of the loop gain. So this is now the loop gain. It's starting from zero frequency. This is zero frequency. Usually zero frequency will have a zero phase shift of the loop gain. I'm talking about the loop gain itself, the absolute, the, the value itself. This is without the negative phase reversal, etc. This is just the loop gain, okay? So it starts with zero phase shift. And then it goes like this with a phase lagging usually in practical systems. And then it goes to this point, which is a frequency of, you might say, infinity. This is zero and this is infinity. Now this is the theoretical part, which is the negative frequencies. Obviously we don't have negative frequencies, but from theoretical point of view, you can talk about positive frequencies and negative frequencies. So we have here now the loop gain shown in a different way in which the magnitude here is the loop gain, the absolute value here, this is this vector here, and this is the phase. And here it starts at zero, goes to infinity or minus infinity, the same point, and then it goes back to zero. Okay, and then I'm showing here a point which is minus one. Why minus one? This has to do with the one plus loop gain here. So we are looking for the case in which the loop gain is minus one. Remember, this was a problematic point. Okay, so we are looking for this point again. It has to do with the Cauchy. Uh, transform, I'm not talking about it, but let's just talk about the tool itself. So this is the minus one point, and I'm also plotting here the unit circle, okay? So the location here on this circle is a distance of one from zero. This is minus one, this will be plus one, okay? And this will be, of course, the J1 and minus J1, okay? So this is the presentation of a given loop gain, you might say a given transfer function, in which we have in the denominator one plus this value. And now the Nyquist criterion. The Nyquist criterion, which again is based on the Cauchy transformation, says the following. If you go clockwise, from zero, okay, to infinity and back. Then if you encircle the minus one point, it means that you have a pole in the right half side of the complex plane. If you don't encircle it, then you don't have a pole and the system is stable, okay? So this is the criteria. Now again, it is based on the Cauchy transformation and, and we can use it to test a given system. Now here, we really don't need all the transfer function. We just need this loop gain. We can get it from simulation. We don't need an expression for it. I'll show you later on that in simulation, you can actually plot this curve. Okay. So you don't need to do any analytical derivation of the system. You don't need to know the model. You can just simulate the model and get this information. So now the question is, if I have a plot of the loop gain in the Nyquist domain here, how can I tell as to whether the 
plot here of the curve the loop gain will encircle the minus one point or not here comes to help this unit circle here of magnitude one you see here i have a point which i call a penetration this is where this uh, curve this loop gain is penetrating the unit circle so if the loop gain is not encircling the minus one then at the penetration will be below 180 degree remember this is the phase this is 180 degree if it is penetrating below 100 degree then it will not encircle this point if it is encircling beyond 180 degree then surely it is encircling the minus one point and i'm going to show it here so here we have a case a very special case in which we are just exactly touching the minus one point and penetrating it here now this is an oscillator this is rarely of important because we are talking about stable system so this is a stable system this is a very special case and this is an example of an unstable system we have the loop gain starting from here zero and then it is encircling the minus one and then it goes all the way around with the negative frequencies so therefore according to the Nyquist criteria which is based on the Cauchy transformation then this system has a pole in the right side of the complex plane and this system will be unstable okay so this is the Nyquist criteria now let me just emphasize here that all this is correct if we don't have right side zero right side zero on the right side of the complex plane okay if we have zero then it becomes more complex i'm not going to discuss it i'll just say that there is a way to take it into account but you have to know how many zeros in the right of plane you have so i'm assuming here that for the system that i'm discussing and the range of frequency that i'm discussing there are either no right side zero or they are not important in the sense that they are beyond the frequency of interest okay so the Nyquist criteria is for the case that you have all left side zero so now comparing now the stable case which is the blue and the red which is unstable we can understand a very important thing which is well known of course that phase lag in a system is something very bad what does it mean phase lag if i start with a system of this blue one which is stable and then i have a phase lag in the system phase lag meaning that it will push this curve to where here so it will push it from the blue into the red so the more phase shift you have the more unstable you might get so this is a very important observation at this point so the Nyquist plot is very powerful and we can use the criteria and go to tell as to whether a system is. but plotting this uh, Nyquist plot is not easy today with simulation it's getting very easy but it is takes quite a bit of an effort in order to plot this to get uh, uh, the curve here and to tell as to whether it's encircling or not the minus one point a more convenient way is something that we are used to is the border plot okay and here we have the border plot uh, this is the magnitude and this is the phase well it turns out that the border plot is just another way of looking at the same information in fact the Nyquist presentation here and the border are the same thing except it's 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 looked at in a different way so let's understand how this similarity is all about you see this unit circle what does this mean it means that the magnitude here is one 
So this is basically the zero dB line here. Zero dB means that the gain is one. Here also the gain is one. Okay? Now at a given point, say here or here, the vector here, the magnitude, is the information that we have here. What we have here is the magnitude of the loop gain. I'm talking about plotting the loop gain in the border presentation. So this is the magnitude and the magnitude is the vector here. And then the phase for any given point, the phase, is in fact this part which is broken down into the two plots here. This is the magnitude, this is the phase. This is sort of combining it to one plot. So this is exactly as this plot. There's the same information just in a different way. Okay? So now the question is, how can we now translate this observation that we had before regarding the question is the, whether the plot is encircling or not the minus one into the body plot. So as I have said, one way is to look at the point of penetration and to look at the phase at this point. So if the phase is less than 180 degree, then we are okay. So what is this penetration point? This is where the loop gain is equal to one. This is this point. This is the magnitude, and this is when the loop gain is equal to one. Now I'm looking at the phase. This is 180 degree, and it is penetrating. Well, this is wrongly drawn. It should be here. This here, we have a difference here. That is, we are penetrating somewhere here be before the 180 degree, so therefore this system is stable. Now this difference between 180 degree and the actual phase of penetration is called the phase margin. The smaller the phase margin, the closer you are to the instability point. Then this is therefore the phase margin and this system is stable. So in this case, if you are below, you are penetrating the unit circle, this is the penetration, and the phase is more than 180 degree negative, then you are encircling the minus one and this system will be unstable. So that's it. This is the whole story behind the Nyquist and the translation into the border plane. So let's do some simulation to demonstrate what I've just said and the principle of the Nyquist criterion. And I'm using here an operation amplifier in a closed loop, of course. And this is a non-inverting amplifier. The input goes to into the plus and then there is a feedback to the minus and then there is a ratio here. And the gain is R1 plus R2 over R1. It's not important here. The point is that this is a feedback system and I'm going to inject into this system extra phase lag so as to demonstrate that when you have this extra phase lag in certain cases then you are okay. Just to demonstrate that it's very important to see where is this phase lag and in some cases you may have a very large phase lag and still the system will be stable. So here is the empty spice schematics. This is the amplifier. Here is the non-inverting gain here, the two resistors, the gain is uh, about 100 and then I have here a AC source, this is for small signal analysis and as uh, you probably know and if you don't then please look up some of the videos in my YouTube channel which is discussing it. If you have an AC source like this and you run a AC analysis then the ratio between this point out and this point feedback is the loop gain can get the 
amplitude, the magnitude, and the phase. So this is the basic amplifier, and then I have here a auxiliary circuit. This is just a dependent voltage source, uh, looking at this point here, generating a voltage which is in this case uh, 20 times higher. And then I have this extra phase leg, which I'm injecting back here. So I have a system which has an extra phase leg that I can actually play where at which frequency is this uh, phase leg uh, large or small. Okay, so this is the basic uh, simulation circuit. Now let's start with the basic case. There's no phase leg injection. And this is the basic amplifier. And this is now an AC source for looking at the loop gain. So I'm running now a AC analysis and I'm looking at the ratio of these two points. I am adding the minus because the simulation shows the actual ratio between these two points, but all the expressions that we have are taking into account the fact that there is already a negative sign to it, so therefore I have to put it back to represent the actual situation in which I know that there is a negative feedback involved and that this is a one plus the loop gain. Okay, so this is just a correction for the sign of the phase in phase. If I am not put it this way, then I'll get positive phases, although we know that in this case we have a negative or a lagging phase shift. Okay, so this is very typical for a operation amplifier. I have the open loop gain, that's the loop gain, and then I have the phase, and then you see that at the point of the penetration into the unit circuit, this is when the loop gain is one, I have a phase length of minus 90 degree. This is excellent, okay? So I have a phase margin of 90 degree. Well, I could get a higher bandwidth, but this is the situation here. And um, so this system is stable. And indeed, if I inject a signal, it's a square wave, I see at the output the signal, and then here is the rise time of this sing a single pulse, everything is fine. Now it's a slow rise time because uh, the bandwidth is limited in this particular case. Here, here it is, it's about a uh, few kilohertz, so rise time is accordingly uh, fairly slow. So everything is fine, it's a stable system. Now I'm injecting this extra phase lag and looking again at the loop gain. And here is the phase that I'm adding, okay? This is just the part of the phase injection. Again, we see here a drop in the amplitude. This is because we have uh, two low pass filters. And then we have a total phase shift of 180 degree because each stage is uh, shifting the phase by 90 degree. So this is the injection. And when I combine this with the feedback of the basic circuit, you see that the combination here is a, it's not a product, it's a, it's a addition. I'm adding the two transfer function and here what I'm getting, and this is something that I've shown earlier, this is the loop game of the system with the injected phase. So I have here a uh, gain, I have here a phase shift, now the unity gain is here, the phase shift is minus 90 degree, according to Nyquist criteria, if this system does not have a zero at the right side of the complex plane, this system is stable. I could have seen, so now let's have a look at the Nyquist plot of this system. So here it is. You can get with LT spice very quickly, very conveniently, the Nyquist plot because all you have to do is to right click this axis here, the numbers here, and you'll get a window 
and that you can choose Nyquist or Bode. And when you choose Nyquist, that is what you are getting. Very simple, very basic. So what I see here is the Nyquist plot, starting here with the low phase, and then it is sort of lagging here, and then it goes here. Now the point that I'm interested in is somewhere here, zero and zero, it's a minus one, but you see that these are huge numbers here because the gain is very, very high, as you've seen, 120 dB, etc. so it's, it's a very high gain. So you can't see anything here, so we have to zoom it in. And here I'm zooming it in, and you see that it goes this way, this way, and as you can see, it starts to go like this, because the face is going down, okay? And here it is, zoomed into the area that we are interested in here, is the unit circle, well, it's not unit because the uh, di divisions here don't have equal length here, so this is why it's an ellipse. But this is now the minus one point, this is the minus one point, this is the unity circle, and this is the penetration, and this is the 90 degree uh, phase margin. So this system is stable. There's no problem with it in terms of stability. And indeed, if I run a time domain analysis, everything looks good. In this case, I have a sinusoidal input. Well, there is some startup uh, changes here, but then it's uh, very stable. Everything is fine. There's no problem. Looking inside, it's a sinusoidal waveform. And in this case, I'm injecting a short pulse as compared to the period. The period is uh, 100 milliseconds, meaning that it's a 10 hertz, and this is a 300 microsecond pulse. And it's coming from here. It's a closed loop with the injection. And you can see that uh, we have a very nice response. There's nothing special about it. And if you look inside, you see the very nice pulse. So this system, with this very huge phase shift, and phase reversal at 180 degree with such a high gain is stable. There's no problem about it, okay? The things you have to worry about is what is the phase when you penetrate the unit circuit and penetration means zero dB of a loop gain and what is the phase here? Phase here is 90 degree and as we have seen, this is what we see in the uh, Nyquist plot and everything is fine. So now, let's demonstrate the case in which the system is unstable. So what I did, I've changed the values here of the injection, of the uh, phase lag injection, such that it will be unstable. That is, we have now a case in which the loop gain is one here, the phase is now indeed very bad, it's beyond 180 degree. So this is in fact an unstable system because we w the penetration is beyond 180 degree when the loop gain is one. Let's have a look at the Nyquist. Again, well, this is uh, a scale that you can't tell anything because there's a huge number here and we're interested in, a, in, in this area here. So let's zoom in. I'm zooming in, and here is what I'm getting. So, in this case, here is what I'm penetrating here. Clearly, this could have seen from the uh, body plot that I've shown earlier. And this is above 180 degrees, so this system is unstable. And if I run now a time domain simulation, the injection is square wave, the output is something else because it's oscillating and if I zoom in you see that the system is just oscillating. So this is clearly an unstable system and the reason is of course that we do have a pole in the right half side of the complex plane as recognized by the Nyquist criteria. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.